I think the title is Socializing the Box. And uh, I think a lot of people have been looking forward to this one because it has a, a hospitality slant, of course, but is predominantly based around co-working and co-living. And we have got quite a few of the innovative brands in that space in the room today. But I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. I have got a zany American at the back, uh, a true friend, Glenn Houseman, who's going to host this session with another friend, Paul Wells of Dexter Moran. Welcome, guys. Is this the uh, clicker? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got this, uh, fancy German ones. We don't have this uh, back in the States. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Glenn. Good morning. I'm Paul. Hey, so it's great to uh, see you all. I love, the, uh, I love this. It makes me feel like there's a more significance to our conversation yes. than a regular little Pell mic. We should be doing like uh, TED Talks or something like that, right? When I was, uh, when I was a small boy, uh, we didn't have service apartments in my community. Or maybe it could be we could do like, uh, uh, instead of a boy band, we could do like an yep. old man band or like something like that. Song. Hey, you've got my alternative <laughs> accommodation, baby, right? All right, All right so today uh, we're going to have, have a little fun and really get each and every one of you to start thinking about some really important topics that we have uh, out there in here. So our session is called uh, Socializing the Box, and I think the best place to start is Tell us a little about who we are. Paul, you want to so share? So I work for Dexter Marin. I think we're going to have a one-minute session later, but we're London-based hospitality architects. Yeah, so we're, we've got a little bit less time to make okay. up for it, just so you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm Glenn Hausman. I'm the host of uh, Here to Stay TV, which is all focused on alternative accommodations and this world of convergence that we're going in. Plus, um, stateside, I do my, my full-time business, which is uh, NoVacancyNews.com, the No Vacancy Podcast. I do a tech podcast, a design podcast. And I do uh, Checking In with Anthony and Glenn, a show I do about career empowerment with uh, the Travel Channel's Anthony Melcury from Hotel Impossible. It's a lot of fun. We do that show uh, twice a week. But more importantly, uh, you can check out a great interview I did with peers all about this uh, event. It's already up at Here to Stay TV, and you'll be learning more about that as we go through it. So we've got three topics today, and we're going to ask each of you to join one of these discussions. What are our topics here so today? Connecting to the customers, quite clearly. Um, changing the urban environment, and what is a community? Right, so you're probably saying to yourself, what does all this mean? Well, we decoded it for you. <laughs> changing, uh, connecting to the customers. So it's all about how do we better connect with the customers as we move further into this co-working and co-living era. Big changes afoot. How are you going to adapt to the societal trends that we see out there in order to really make those emotional connections with customers? And that's what, the, uh, that's what we think is uh, super important here. Next one. Changing the environment, how our towns and cities are changing, how we are changing the way we live, the way we work, the way we live as community, and how we can bring our hospitality focus into those areas as well, and how we can really help people through the way we work, and working from home, working together, and less of a focus on the office environment. Right, and you know, to me, I love that. Um, it used to be the whole idea of, uh, at least in the United States, we're creating more activated lobbies. It was more about the notion of being alone together, as opposed to really being together and interacting and creating that sense of uh, community. So the last one, of course, is what is community? What do people want or currently miss that co-living and co-working is there to provide? How can the extended stay market, co-living and co-working sectors better come together to deliver positive societal transformation? And that just means getting uh, more together, focusing on each other. So some topic points that may come up in your conversations for one of these three topics are, you want to read some of those, Paul? So how we develop shared working in a boutique hospitality environment. Uh, so bringing hotel, really, a hotel focus into that shared working. How we bring the home office together and how that can... We obviously start working from home now. We're working together in offices. We're less focused on the office and how that comes together. Also, this idea of a digital nomad traveling around the globe, how we create that sense of community around the whole world. So obviously, there is a view that people can move from one office to another and and not necessarily focus on one place, one city at one time. Don't you? Right. Yeah. Um, so what we've got here is we've got three different groups, and we're going to do two groups for each topic point. And they're going to be run by these folks. So what I'd like to do is uh, introduce each of the individuals and have them share, I don't 10, 15 seconds about uh, 
who you are. Um, so let's start with uh, Steve Burns. Steve Burns, Magic Director, Bridge Street. I'm still coming out of my visualizing fields and streams and things <laughs> on the beach. So, uh, but in thinking about that, I mean, we've heard the stories about people working from the beach or sitting by the pool and doing some work, and those things are becoming a reality. People are taking their work everywhere. But looking forward today to thinking about how we, how we reach out to customers. How do they know about us as operators, as owners of space that's available for use? And how do you really reach them in a world which is quite fragmented in many ways? How do you bring it all together uh, into a, a usable and accessible uh, means of communication, right. means of selling, and so on? So looking forward to having that discussion. Great. And then at the, uh, at the end, after you guys have done the workshop, all of our team leaders will come up and uh, report back. Uh, Andrew uh, Fowler, Acquisitions Director of Seiko. Andrew. All right. Quick, 10, 15 Morning, seconds. Everybody. We're okay, very, very quickly, short on time, so um, we can move through it. Seiko Property Group, but our main focus is on the lock concept, uh, lifestyle apart hotel concept, bringing the best of uh, co-living, emerging it with the best of uh, co-working, uh, developing the concept as we go. We now got three open, but really looking about how we connect uh, and create that sense of community. People are traveling more for, for longer periods of times. Uh, and it's how we continue to evolve that process uh, and product uh, to give them uh, the product that they require, balancing the co-living and the co-working elements. Great, thanks. And Paul, then you they're changing the urban environment, Katie Zulke, I hope I said that right, from say Oberholtz. Welcome, Katie. You correct me if I got your surname wrong. Good morning, everybody. So it's uh, Kati Zulke. Sorry. <laughs> no, I know it's difficult for everybody who's not speaking German. But um, So I work for St. Oberholz. We run two um, co-working spaces here in the center of Berlin. Actually, we were one of the first ones who opened up a space in Germany. And uh, we also open up spaces together with partners. So last year, we opened the first space together with a bank. And we will open two more spaces just in the next two months. So we are actually um, getting bigger and bigger. And because everybody asked me, what's co-working and what are you actually doing? We also started consulting. So if anybody of you needs a hint what co-working is, just ask me. <laughs> uh, Harry Harris from SUSD. Just. Just. I just learned, I learned that yesterday, so you know, I'm bragging about it. Welcome, Harry. Hi, thank you. Morning. Hi there. Um, yeah, I had to, oh, shall I? Sorry, no, no. Oh. I had to teach Glenn what SUS meant yes, last, yeah. last night. <laughs> uh, SUS is a small uh, creative development consultancy working in um, largely private members club area and hotels. We've been lucky enough to be involved in a couple of new startup members clubs, the Curtain and the Devonshire Club in London. And I'd like to talk about what I'd call the state of play today um, because I think what we're involved in is, has elements of play and should be playful, but whilst really considering technology and the way that everybody wants to be connected and get connected, but at the same time the dilemma about switching off and having a much more sensual sort of experience with our own environment. Excellent, uh, I love it. Next up we're gonna be talking about what is a community. So we have uh, Mark Jungarius from uh, Zoku. Mark? You feel free to throw it, it's soft. <laughs> It also adds a little bit more of a sporting element. Thanks a lot. Um, in the end, the vision that Zoku has is connecting people and ideas. And Zoku is running a kind of either a part hotel, service department, hotel, but we're combining kind of all business models huh? from uh, 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 co-working, co-living. We kind of stack the business models on top of each other and really delighted to be in this group. What is a community? Thanks a lot for that. Excellent. And then finally, Travis Todd, co-founder of Factory International and co-founder and CEO of Silicon Alley. Welcome. All right, there you get in the spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Travis Todd. I'm co-founder of uh, Silicon Alley, which is um, started as a community organization, so I think I'm in the right topic there, uh, for uh, Berlin's international tech entrepreneurs. 
um, and uh, through our relationship with, with Factory, where I'm now also co-founder of their international expansion, um, we opened our first um, space as well. And I have to apologize for the change of venue because um, as we started with uh, from software and tech, we're also learning a lot about real estate. So um, yeah, we had some construction issues that caused the, uh, the change of venue. So again, apologies, but I'm hoping to learn as much from you guys about that industry as I can teach you about community. Beautiful, thank you. So uh, what we're gonna do is um, if you see there's uh, boards around there with the group numbers, uh, group leaders, you got the corresponding numbers there. Everybody just kind of move your chairs around, get together. These guys are gonna facilitate the conversations and we will report back in 15, 20 minutes and have a little bit of group discussion. Have fun and happy brainstorming. I don't think you guys are giving yourself enough credit. Let's try it one more time. Congratulations to you guys. All right. That's my polite way of getting y'all to, uh, you know, quit it. And let's, let, let's move on. So, uh, right. you know, uh, Paul, what do you think? We think? Let's go around the room. And, yeah, yeah. Yep. Go, in, so, go in order. So, Steve, you're up. All right. So, what we want to do is we want to have you guys just kind of summarize everything you talked about. And we'll do both, both people from one topic and then maybe have a few questions and have a, a little bit of a discussion. We're a little short on time. Steve, go for it. Okay, uh, so we were looking at connecting with customers and whatever that might mean to us all. Uh, vague uh, on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we talked first of all about the challenges. What is it we're trying to solve? And some of the challenges we talked about were noise. There's generally a lot of noise, a lot of data from lots of different sources, and how do you deal with all of that? some low product awareness either of brands or of concepts or of the whole idea of the, the sharing economy and so on. The inevitable comparison, the reference points with hotels because that's what people are familiar with in, in terms of the accommodation side. And thinking about who we're trying to communicate to. Are we talking to individuals, to customers, uh, to groups, to corporates and so on? And then we talk a lot about expectation management. How do you, first of all, listen to the customer uh, understand what their requirements are, what their expectations are, how do you set expectations, and then how do you, how do you deliver on those? Um, and a lot of discussion was about matching um, the expectation, the delivery of that to, to the expectation set in advance. And then the customer journey before, during, and after, how do you communicate with them you know, before they even are aware of you or the concept, uh, during the purchase, during the sale, um, on arrival, wherever that might be, during the stay or during the usage of the facility, and afterwards. Um, so we covered a lot of uh, that customer journey, as we discussed. And a lot of the, um, inevitably, we ended up using the word Google because everything's out there somewhere, right? But how do we know it's, it's, it's good, solid information, it's reliable, it's curated, and it's, it's been, it's been, it comes with our recommendation, whatever, whoever we choose to be. Um, so customization of needs, we talked about how do we deal with the noise? Challenges, m multiple brands, multiple communication channels, but the important thing we thought was clarity, first of all, of um, the message and who you're talking to. So what are you trying to say? Who are you trying to communicate it to? Narrowing that down to something that's really targeted and choosing when you communicate. We're all bombarded as individuals with communication on email and everywhere else uh, constantly. And the timing of that communication uh, is really quite important. And the importance of analytics in, in all of that, in distilling information and customer base, we thought was very important. <coughs> Uh, in terms of expectation management, we, I mentioned this about the journey, the customer journey, and how you communicate at different points, and how we manage different expectations, and people using the same infrastructure. So say an apartment for one night, that customer has a very different expectation of the product than someone who's staying for three or four months, for example. Um, and then we talked a lot about post-trip, so TripAdvisor, social media, and quite often as brands in the accommodation sector, you're judged online about how you respond 
to other people's complaints. So the inevitable TripAdvisor complaint, you know, it's not about the complaint itself, it's how you respond online and how you're judged on that in, in the public eye. And then we briefly talked about data at the end and again this word of targeting and refining who it is you're communicating to and what you say uh, to them and getting the message really clear. But also having the right data in the first place. Increasingly with multiple layers in distribution channels, you don't always have the same amount of information from the guest as the person who took the reservation in the first place, for example. It might be, might be filtered, so that's often a challenge. So there's a whistle-stop tour through uh, our discussion in the last uh, 15 minutes. Great. All right. So uh, let's hurry and go to... Uh, uh, great. You can applaud. Sorry to cut you, you off. You deserve it. All right. Andrew, maybe just try to keep it to uh, a minute or two because we're starting to run a little short on time and I no want to give everyone a chance we'll to speak. We'll keep it quick. You, you can tell Steve comes obviously from sort of an operational background where I probably come from a more conceptual background. Beautiful. So we, <laughs> we took a little, bit of some a, a little bit of a different approach to the same kind of question. So... We broke it down essentially into probably more along the lines of the guest experience, um, pre-arrival, uh, the arrival, setting, setting the mood, setting the tone, uh, and then on to the guest stay where we kind of actually ran a little bit out of time. But um, I think what we, dis we, we discussed a lot was um, how do we put more into the pre-arrival, you know, finding out what the guest uh, really wants uh, and, and, and using that technology. Um, we all get a million emails, nobody reads their emails, nobody clicks through uh, and would actually bother trying to, do, trying to do their sort of pre-arrival checks. So we do believe that developing some form of app or some form of technology uh, where people can uh, put their preferences uh, or even pre-log in uh, or pre-check -pre in. So it's a case of does your customer actually want the touch point uh, when they arrive? Um, we talked about uh, automatic check-ins, the pros and the cons. Uh, we've even seen some hotels taking out automatic check-ins now. So we think that there's a balance there. Uh, we think that some people on arrival uh, are going to want to have more communication, more human touch points than others. Uh, some people are going to want to go straight to their room. Uh, so finding that out before they arrive uh, and giving them a piece of simple technology to allow them to make the, that choice uh, and also any special needs or wants they may have uh, pre-arrival. Um, then we moved on really to the actual arrival, and this is obviously the most important uh, piece, the most important uh, setting the tone for the communication uh, in the hotel. So when you first set into that space, you know, what is the feeling? What, what is the kind of the vibe that's going on in that space? Um, we talked about uh, the removal of reception desks. You know, we put our reception desks at the back of the hotel. We front with food and beverage. We front with cafe, co-working space, which is open to the local community. So that space is always buzzing. Um, we talked about when you go to a, a bar or you go to a nightclub, you go there with the intention to socialize. And if you can step into this space in the mindset uh, that you're open to connectivity and you're open to communication, it sets a completely different tone as opposed to stepping into a hotel lobby, you're keeping your head down, you're checking in, it's like, a, and you off, go off. So if we can create a space um, through uh, activity, we decided we wanted lots of greenery, we want lots of plants in that space, we want the right music in that space, uh, we want the staff that are there not to be too formal uh, and intimidating, so obviously the colours that they wear, uh, the way that they're dressed, um, obviously smart, but uh, not too formal because it's going to put people into a formal mindset, whereas we want them to be more in a social mindset. Um, we talked about obviously the need for that cafe, that co-working, uh, which is creating that sense of community, which is creating that buzz. So when you step into it, you're open to that mindset from the word go. Uh, obviously, mu music, uh, absolutely vital for setting that tone as well. Um, what we can't get away from and never will get away from is the old word hospitality. Um, the staff touch points, I have to say, Vision were fantastic at, at it yesterday when we checked in. Every staff member was so friendly, came up, said hello. You know, the simple things will never be lost in hospitality. The little touch point when you get to your room, even if it's a little, a little note uh, signed by the day manager, whoever it is, hospitality should never lose those human touch points, no matter how much technology we use. Um, moving on to the stay. 
Hey, uh, Andrew, do you think you might be able to just okay, wrap sorry. it up? We're running okay, really short quickly. of time, and I want Dur to give During this day, yes. obviously, social programming, uh, events that are run to help staff interact, whether it's uh, wine tastings, whether it's yoga, DJ masterclass, obviously very important. Promoting mindfulness uh, within our hotel space, very stressful livings. We, bu we put yoga mats in all our rooms. Um, and then we obviously wanted to pr promote connectivity uh, via the use of technology, but always front it with human connection. I think the problem is, is you know, we're connecting more and more, and the desire to connect more and more through technology because right. we need to. Yep. Uh, but we're getting, we've never been so lonely, and that's a problem. So we can't get too focused. We want to use the technology, but we want to front it with a human touch. Well, that's, a, that's a big trick, right? Yeah. And uh, last uh, and not least, I think we want to focus towards global networks rather than loyalty programs. <laughs> Lo local, maybe we just need to dra dress them up a different way. But uh, global networks obviously being the way forward. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Straight on to Cathy. All right. Please try, the... please try to keep it top line to two minutes. I, I don't want you guys to miss out on break yeah. time. Uh, there's yeah. little quiches there I know everyone wants. Changing the urban environment. Uh, okay, no pressure. I will be really, really quick. Um, so we actually mainly spoke about the new trend of co-living. Um, why we are actually speaking about this. Like, wh why did this become a topic? And um, I think we figured out it's because we have a lot of freedom. So we can actually choose where we live, choose with who we are living and which kind of environment we are living. And we also think it may be because we are leaking of our well, good old-fashioned family um, communities. Mm. And Great point. We are, you know, we, we feel a little lonely every now and then, and therefore it, it would be nice if you could go to a place where you will be connected very from the beginning with people who are like-minded. So it, actually it's all about choosing what you want to do and where you want to live. And we also ask ourselves which kind of target groups we are actually talking about. Do we speak about students uh, who are living together since, I don't know, since university was, was uh, figured out? Or do we speak about young professionals? Or do we actually speak about something bigger? Do we, is co-living something like a new family? So will we see kids and, and you know, grown-ups and also old people living together? So if this is co-working, then should we do something about this? And um, we also spoke about what should we do differently if we see service departments and where is the difference between a service department and a co-living space. And I always say it's about the people, so actually it's, well, it's about the host you sometimes miss and it's about the human connection you have with other people. And of course we use technology Technologies and we have apps for everything, but the human touch is actually the most important point, and this is also why we speak about co-living. Yep, you're ab Great. absolutely right. Great points. Thank you so much. And over to Harry. All right, good, good luck, on, Harry. Give it a chuck. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Almost had an injury there. Thank you for that throw. All right, two minutes, Harry. <laughs> Go. Right, sorry. Hi. Um, okay, so. I think we, got, we started getting warmed up towards the end uh, where I started annoying people, I think. Um, <laughs> I started saying that I don't think age is important nowadays. It's all about health, health of our environment, health of um, ourselves, um, and that we are picking up on communities and joining tribes, and those tribes are joining clubs, and those clubs can be a hybrid of hotels, co-working, co-living. The gym is a big, important part, as the spa, and then I'm seeing more and more clinics being involved there and my friend Raphael I think said medicine tourism as a part of that which I'd, I'd agree with um, and we see those tribes and those clubs um, influencing the subscription economies and the sharing economies and taking benefit from those which all starts to influence the environment that we are in and visiting and using and I think a lot of the technological advances are beginning to shape those environments and the way we respond to them and they respond to us. Um, there's a bit of a tension, I think, certainly in our group, between technology, the use of technology, and the use of our data, because I pose the fact that di biometrics will become more and more and more part of our daily lives in using hotels, clubs, gyms, etc. cetera. Um, and I quoted um, so a piece of work that had gone on, uh, 5,000 Americans, 5,000 Brits were surveyed, 
and over 60% of those said that they would support um, hotels using that biometric data, and even more of those people um, support airlines using that biometric data, and the researchers see that as uh, the users experiencing greater efficiencies and greater security. Um, and then we went on to nanotechnology, um, which is heavily influencing our immediate environments, everything from responsive environments in terms of thermal, uh, sensory, smell, etc. And biophilic design is part of that, and I also quoted that people would happily pay 27% more for their stay if they were connected with biophilic design, be that um, nature, nurture, garden, whatever. Um, I think that's as quick as I can make Great. it. Great, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Mark. Uh, Mark, go for it. Cool. I'll keep it turbo short. Thank you, sir. Uh, what is a community? Uh, first of all, I think that we have a really nice group here, and <laughs> we kind of formed a little community talking about the same subject, kind of uh, being interested in each other, kind of to try to understand what, uh, 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 what the opinions were driving, and I think that that was already kind of an explanation what is a real community. It is about the human interaction, right? It is about caring, it is about interest, and it is about, um, uh, here we put uh, a few uh, a few words, belonging, uh, authenticity, uh, uh, familiarity, etc. Having a role, having engagement. So, oh, sorry, this is too quick. So that was kind of the what is. Then we started to move a little bit outside of the box because then we said, okay, cool, how can we then improve it or how can we do it in, in our hotels, in our service departments, right? And then we started with frustrations. What, what are the frustrations that we experience? And one of the key frustrations that we experience as a team here is kind of the lack of authenticity in a community or that uh, a community is being imposed on people, that it feels obligated or we don't feel the personal interaction. And now I'm going to the conclusion. Our conclusion is kind of that uh, there are a lot of communities, uh, they can be inclusive, they can be big, they can be as small as a group like this, uh, they can be digital, but most, uh, most importantly, they have to be personal. Um, and I think there are also communities like the old members clubs that we have in London or so that are pretty exclusive. And maybe those communities are more about status and not so more about purpose. And I think that we feel purpose is very important. And having this, right. finding the balance basically between the business and the personal stuff was I love that. that I, I love that Thanks. categorizing of it. And that was the conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Travis. Yeah, thanks. Um, we took a very similar approach um, uh, to what is community. Um, we also enjoyed our uh, microcosm of a, a bigger community here. Um, uh, first, we spit out some just uh, preconceptions, ideas, words that uh, we connected with community as well, including <laughs> some that you already mentioned, um, inclusion, purpose, intention, sense of place, belonging. Uh, connections, um, sharing and creating for the benefit of everyone. And then we looked at um, some communities that um, our group found um, uh, in their own lives uh, that were vibrant and active um, and that they uh, really enjoyed, which included uh, sports groups, uh, their neighborhood, their family, their household moms, which I thought was a great community, um, and their uh, workplace as well. And then we uh, dove a bit more deeper into um, how we could foster and create very vibrant and active communities rather than just communities um, based on uh, proximity. And um, for that we looked at um, creating different uh, layers and granul granularity in um, the links between communities. So the first being obviously physical um, proximity and then common interests um, and then um, how do we identify those uh, interests and kind of um, in our spaces foster and grow them. Um, 
which uh, we realize uh, is a difficult task. You can set out from the beginning either saying this is our community that we want to foster, but what is probably a better approach is to actually look at uh, how communities are organically grown and find the links that are strongest and really foster and grow those, much like you would in a, in a garden or something like that. You know, find the plants that are really growing well and, 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 uh, and focus more your attention on them. Um, we also saw our spaces really as interfaces um, and operating systems for this community. So the space shouldn't drive it, but it should allow the community to connect and to grow a bit like um, what this group was talking about, how do you create a space that creates a buzzing atmosphere as well. And then also that technology should be used as a facilitator to the community, not as the community itself. So Facebook is a bad example of a community, um, but technology should enable you to find the person, personal interactions within your space that allow you to create these um, deeper links um, to these uh, things you've identified that are, that are uh, stronger and more uh, connected to your, your emotions as a community. Excellent, Great. perfect, thank you. Let's hear it for all of you guys, you did a terrific, <coughs> terrific job. All right, so this is a place where uh, Paul has some amazing final thoughts, but, <coughs> excuse me, but we're out of time. We but I think your time. final thoughts were amazing. And um, I was going <laughs> to say something really funny. That's not going to happen either. All right, never happens. Um, and be sure to watch uh, Here to Say TV, Power of Bridge Street. You guys rocked it out. Thank you so much. Have some more conversations about this. Intermingle with each other. Thank you very much. Pierce, let's bring it back to you. Thank you, guys. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.